So this particular lecture is what I'm giving you today is actually part of the 1120. And the reason I'm giving this to you is because it makes a very smooth transition and connection between um, macromolecules and studying molecular DNA, which is a macromolecule. But it also connects what we talked about metabolism and energy, because it turns out that ATP is a nucleotide. It's just a very similar kind of a nucleotide to your DNA nucleotides and your RNA nucleotides. So uh, let's look at organic molecules and in particular um, nucleotides. So there's three principal components to any nucleotide. A nitrogenous base. It's called that because it's got a bunch of nitrogens attached to it. A sugar, monosaccharide, generally a ribose, a five carbon sugar, and one or more phosphate groups. The particular components of adenosine triphosphate is adenine, the nitrogenous base, ribose, the sugar, and three canon, three phosphate groups. And as we saw before, those phosphates, because they're negatively charged, are unstable. And that makes it such a good energy molecule, very high energy bonds. Yeah, the second and third phosphate groups are attached by very high energy covalent bonds because why? They are unstable bonds. Because those negative charges are repelling each other. Um, ATPases are enzymes. Anything that ends with an ase, you can bet your bottom dollar. <laughs> oh, that is such an old expression. <laughs> ATPase. Um, it's an enzyme and it hydrolyzes that third high energy phosphate bond. So um, is it a spontaneous reaction? Yes. All that, all that enzymes do is they just speed it up a little bit. It's still a spontaneous reaction. It still is exergonic, producing um, ADP. And this little inorganic phosphate group that's got energy, why? Because it sort of happily attaches to anything else that happens to be around. It's, it's, a, it's a loose kind of a, kind of a molecule. Um, kinases or phosphokinases, they're enzymes that phosphorylate. We talked about phosphorylation. So this little inorganic phosphate, it's like, oh, here's the sodium potassium pump. And it needs some energy to pump sodium out and potassium. Oh, no, it's the other way around, sorry. Mm -hmm. Here's the pump. Uh, potassium out, sodium in. Maintaining the negative charge inside the cell. That's the sodium potassium pump. You expend like half of your energy that you eat a day on the, this sodium potassium pump. And this, this inorganic phosphate, it goes, woohoo, I'm just going to attach myself to this pump. Or rather, the ATP attaches. And when the inorganic phosphate disattaches, that causes the transition, countercurrent. Yeah, and the, the enzyme that attaches the ATP to that sodium potassium pump is called uh, phosphokinase. And the action is called phosphorylate or phosphorylation. So this is what ATP looks like. See, lots of nitrogens. I didn't lie about that. Would I lie to you? <laughs> no, that's a show. I haven't actually seen it, but I, I've seen it advertised. Yeah, so this is the adenosine uh, triphosphate. Here's your ribose. 
and your tri triple three phosphate groups on there. Yeah, and there's this protocol about um, numbering the carbons on a sugar that's going to be important later on. So if you don't see a C, if you don't see a C on a carbon ring where the corners come together, you'll just have to assume that there is a C. There, there will always be a carbon there. Wherever it doesn't say anything else, there's a carbon here there's an oxygen, but at every other corner, there's a carbon and they're numbered. So this is on the right, one prime carbon. And this one here that has this first hydroxyl group is the two prime carbon. Uh, This is the three prime, this one is the four prime, and this one is the five prime. And I just want you to keep that in mind because it will make it uh, more understandable when we look at a DNA replication. Yeah, because it, as it turns out uh, with DNA, you can only add on to the three prime. You can't add on anywhere else. So you can only make a DNA molecule in one direction which has implications. So this is what we talked about last time, all about energy, uh, cellular respiration, glucose, oxygen, converted to carbon dioxide water, releases energy, uh, which is used for hydrolysis of AD, AD, or is used for, sorry, the synthesis of ADP and phosphate into ATP, which is then available for all these jobs and duties that we have in our cell. And there's three things in chat. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I missed that, Katie. I, when you actually said that. <laughs> so yeah, we, we looked at glycolysis, uh, splitting a six carbon glucose into two, three carbon pruvic acid molecules, just a bit, just a bit of review. Yields two ATPs. That's fantastic. Uh, if there weren't any oxygen, if there's no oxygen, uh, the pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid sometimes, uh, sometimes into alcohol, but in animals into lactic acid. Um, there's some ATP produced, but of course, this process can go around in a cycle because of the NAD. If there is oxygen available, then pruvic acid will be efficiently consumed in the mitochondrion. And then there'll be 36 more available ATP molecules. And that production occurs with alarming frequency. So our overview is, yeah, glycolysis, um, anaerobic fermentation, but if there's oxygen, aerobic respiration. Well, here's some other nucleotides of interest. One is called guanosine triphosphate. Sometimes it donates a phosphate group to other molecules or to ADP. It's quite instrumental in the second messenger system of a cell. It's often there waiting to do a bit of work. Um, cyclic adenosine monophosphate that's AMP, adenosine monophosphate. So you've got your adenine. It's only got one phosphate group left. That's called adenosine monophosphate, mono for one. And it forms after both the phosphates are removed. And that occurs after the first messenger system as well, binds to the cell surface. It triggers the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP, and that's called the second messenger. And nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. So a nucleotide is the monomer of the nucleic acid, just like for proteins, the monomer is the, a different kind of acid. What, is, what are the monomers of proteins? You can write that in the chat if you like. 
amino mineral acids. acids. Yeah, amino acids, excelente, yeah. What are the monomers of carbohydrates? Monosaccharides. Monosaccharides, exactly, yeah. So good. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what cyclic AMP, AMP looks like. See, it's just got this one phosphate group. The rest of it looks the same as ATP. Oh, I'm super sorry. Can you scroll up to the previous slide, please? Uh, the one, yes, this one. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. No problemo. And now we get to nucleic acids. Uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's 100 million to 100 million nucleotides long. It contains a genetic code for, well, everything. Cell division, reproduction, and the instructions for protein synthesis. You and I are protein-based individuals, so DNA codes for the particular proteins that make us who we are. RNA, you gotta lose the deoxy, is just simply ribonucleic acid. Uh, there's three forms of RNA. They are much smaller, 70 to 10,000 nucleotides long. They carry out the instructions by DNA. You need DNA to make, for example, messenger RNA. And um, the messenger RNA synthesizes the proteins coded for by DNA, along with transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. So that, my friends, is the end of that lecture. Bum -ba -da -ba. Now I'll go to our handy dandy lecture where we ended off last time flows rather nicely, I think. The instructions for life, nucleic acids, proteins. Proteins make the vast majority of your body, except for the minerals and stuff. Uh, they're made from codes that are written on genes. Genes are parts of DNA that contain nucleotides in a particular order that's called the sequence. There's two types, RNA, and DNA. DNA gives instructions and direction for its own replication. So that's the first thing we'll look at is replication. It also directs the synthesis of RNA and controls protein synthesis. Yeah, we, of course, we inherit our DNA from our parents. Half of your DNA is from your mom, half of your DNA is from your dad. Um, DNA molecules are very long, hundreds to thousands of genes. Um, when a cell reproduces itself by mitosis or division, its DNA is copied. Sometimes, if it's copied in germ cells, which go through meiosis, the next generation gets that DNA. eggs and sperm, the next, next generation of individuals. And mitosis, just simply the daughter cells get that DNA. So what are they? Lots of nucleotides joined together. Three parts, as we've seen, nitrogen space, a pentose, which is a sugar, a five carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. There's two different kinds of nucleotides. They're known as purines and pyrimidines. There are two types. Pyrimidines have a single six-membered ring. The three different pyrimidines are cytosine, we always indicate that with a capital C, thymine, a capital T, uracil, capital U, which is only part of RNA. Purines, have a six-membered ring joined to a five-membered ring. So there's two rings. Two rings, not one. Uh, they're double. The only way I can remember that is that purine has a U in it and double has a U in it. <laughs> so that's one way to remember that the purines are double rings. And the two purines are adenine and guanine. 
So when I get to this part of the lecture, it just never ever ceases to amaze me that these five nucleotides give rise to every single protein of every single life form on Earth. Never ceases to amaze me. So here's what they look like. Cytosine, thymine. You don't have to memorize the structure, uh, but do remember the names of the, of the nucleotides themselves, cytosine, thymine, uracil. Uracil is only an RNA. Um, adenine, guanine. Is your purines with the two rings? Pyrimidines with the single ring. And a single ring can only hydrogen bond to a double ring. So here's your deoxyribose and your ribose. Now you tell me, what is the difference between these two riboses? Take a close look. Uh, there's a, an extra OH instead of an H on the, at the bottom there in the ribose. So here? Uh, yeah, it's an OH in ribose. Good, okay. Yeah, so that's why this is called deoxy. Deoxy, less oxygen, in this case, one less oxygen. And that, my friends, is the difference. Yeah, so here's a polynucleotide. We're putting them together. Some have double rings, some have single rings. But keep in mind that we can only add a new nucleotide onto the three prime carbon. And there is our beautiful DNA molecule. Isn't that lovely? A double strand. All hail Rosalind Franklin. <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah, Rosalind Franklin, she discovered the double helix with uh, crystal, uh, crystal chromatography or something like that, or radiography. I'm not sure exactly the method that she used, but yes, Rosalind Franklin definitely. I think, I think Crystal. Yeah. That. I, I love yeah. that book, the, the Double Helix. I have not read that. The Double Helix. Is that about Rosalind Franklin? Well, no, it's about Watson and Quick, but she features tangentially in history. Ah. Um, anyway, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll digress, but she's awesome. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm just going to stop there for a second.